Hello all, Corey Vanderpool here. Today I'm going to show you a quick, simple trick on how to make your backgrounds perfect white. Now say you have this image and now the client wants it to be on perfect white for whatever reason, no need to stress. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it on two different images. A black and white image, a color image, and two different types of hair. So the first thing to do is watch my video on crops so you can figure out how crops work. The video is below. I have it set to a white crop. This way you can see clearly if your image is going to be black and white. Now, what I like to do is hit W for your quick select key. And on these easy parts, it's very simple to do. Just go around. I'll show you how to finesse it a little bit later. Uh, for things like this, I always turn my crop off. You can turn it back on at the end and bring this over. Now you'll see when we zoom in that it doesn't like the white so much. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold option and you're just gonna come over it just a little bit and you'll see that it does come back with the shirt. This is a very difficult one because it is white against gray so it will be a little bit fickle but you're, you will have to come in and fine tune it by yourself. If anyone says to you that there's a quick simple way to do this, I promise you there is not. It will look cheap, it won't look natural, and you're going for natural. Uh, your eye can spot immediately if it doesn't look great. So what you want to do is keep painting, and there you go, that's pretty good. So when you have that set, now what you want to do is you want to make a new brightness and contrast layer. So now that that's on, you turn your crop back on, and now you can see if you are going to perfect white. What you want to do is, I always like to use Legacy. And you can see it's already blown out and perfect white. I always go the brightness just a little bit more. So there you go, pretty simple. But what you want to do is you want to use your B tool, the brush tool, make sure an opacity of 100, and you want to go zoom in and make sure all of your lines are good. You can see here, check to make sure we are good, but just a little clean up here. I'm using the X tool to go back and forth between taking it away and adding it. That sleeve looks great. See, it's a little sloppy in and around here. So what you want to do is you just want to soften those edges. You're just going to have to come back in and paint it around. I highly recommend a tablet. You'll be able to fly through this. Uh, if you're using a mouse, it might be a little, a little bit more difficult. I will be doing a tablet versus mouse video in a few, but just bear with me for now. Can you see that nice little soft edge is coming around? You really just want to get rid of that hard digital line. And now what I'm doing is I'm holding the shift tool while I click and it's giving me that nice soft edge. I always keep my brush at zero hardness. If you want to go with a stronger hardness, just make the brush smaller. Trust me. Now we're going into the hair, which can be a little bit more difficult. As you can see, there are a little bit of flyaways but I don't care about that too much. You just want to eat into that hair as long as it's perfect white. The hair actually looks fantastic around here. You can see that we're losing a little bit of contrast here, so just want to make it a little bit darker. There you have it. But you can't see that it is perfect white. See, now we can show our before and after. Fantastic. Okay, and now a little bit of a different one, different hair, color image, but we're going to use the exact same technique. I like to turn off my grain and my crop here. And I'm going to use my W tool for your quick select. And we're just going to paint this in again. Same kind of skill. Now again, this really is the best method for gray background. If you want, to, if you have a different color background that is an inversion of white, like a black or a red, this technique will not work for you. But this is great if you want a perfect white and you just don't have the ability to light your background. This is the best trick for that. So again, I'm using the option key to turn that plus on the inside of the tool to a minus. As you can see here, plus minus. And I'm just painting back 
what I don't need. But you see, this is all pretty good. I'm gonna do one in here just to see how this works out. But I'm gonna, I know for a fact, I'm gonna have to paint uh, and hand sculpt this. It's just a little bit smaller. All right, forget this part right here. And now what we're gonna do is again, contrast. I like to turn my crop on so I can see how this will blend into white. And what I'm gonna do is just turn it up. I like to use Legacy, it gives you the most range. Just turn it up a little bit. And you see it's starting to eat away in the sides. And boom, we're already at perfect white. Simple. Perfect white. Now what you want to do is go in and check your edges. The edges look pretty good here. You always want to flip it on and off, make sure you're good. We lost a little bit of the flyaways here, no big deal. But it does look great in here. What I want to do is I want to take my brush at a lower opacity and just, say 23 opacity, and just paint it in. Make sure on the right slick and just paint it in. Now you can see that our subject is in a black silhouette, so you want to make sure that you are on the black brush tool. Just paint it in just so it comes back a little bit. Again, this is going to be very subtle, but it's that subtlety that takes your image to the next level. Zoom out, come up here. Do you see how it still retains all of the flyaways? Perfect. And there you go. Very simple way to give yourself a image on white. All right, guys. My name's Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Instagram. If you would like to see anything new or have any questions, make sure to leave a comment below and hit subscribe. Happy shooting.